Kent will be with us shortly. here from Explore Scientific. Today I'm going to teach you how to polar line your telescope using a broom. Why do you need the polar line? Well, the telescope that has an equatorial mount, you have to get that equatorial axis lined up with the rotation of the Earth. And to do that, we're going to start with the tripod. We're going to decide which one of these legs is going to point north, and we're going to set the tripod down so that leg is pointed north. First thing I'm going to do is use a level to make sure my tripod is level. So if it's tipped one side or the other, that's going to cause your polar alignment to not be accurate. So we're going to use a level for that purpose. Then we're going to take a compass, and just to make sure that I've got it pointed north, I'm going to use the compass, line up, and go, yep, that looks like it's pointed north. So here's what I'm going to do now. And this is where the broom comes in. The broom becomes a measurement device, if you will. So I'm going to put the broom on the ground with the tip of it right against the north leg of the tripod. And I'm going to back away, and I'm going to use the compass. I'm going to close one eye, and I'm going to use the compass to make sure that the broom is lined up with north, right? And so I can tell I'm off just a little bit, so I'm going to move the tripod just a little bit, and I'm going to turn the broom. And the broom is what I'm seeing that line with to line up. So closing one eye, now my broom is lined up perfectly to magnetic north. Right here is we're going to talk about something called magnetic declination. The magnetic north is not true north. The difference between true north and magnetic north can be off by as much as 15 or 16 degrees if you live on the east coast or west coast of the United States. Around the world, it varies. And you have to figure out what that is for where you live. Because if you point at magnetic north, you're not going to be pointing at true north. You could be off by 15 degrees. Your go-to will never be accurate. So for this system to work, you have to know what that offset is and be able to program that into your compass we're going to provide a link to a, a, a website and a video that talks about that a whole lot more. Now, we're going to make sure that the tripod is not angled and wrong. I'm going to use a small tape measure, and we're simply going to come down here and be careful not to move the broom, and I'm going to measure the distance from the tripod leg to the center of the broom. That is 470 centimeters. That way, it is 400 and 70, a little, I'm going to call that good. Actually, I'm going to move the tripod a couple of millimeters, just like that. So now, we know that we're lined up true north with that leg, and these two legs are the equal, are the equal distance from right here, so it's not pushed that way or that way. So now that we have the tripod with a good alignment to north, we have to put the head on the mount, and that's going to entail this. We're going to be very careful when we do this because we don't want to move the tripod. We're going to put it on and simply screw on the polar head just like this. Remembering everything's going to the north. Now if you're in the southern hemisphere, 
you're going to do the same thing. You can do the same exact same in the southern hemisphere because it's not polar. It's polar alignment. We just don't use the star Polaris, which we're not using here. This is really good if you can't see Polaris or if it's daytime and you want to do some solo, solar viewing with a solar safe filter. So the last step of this process is to check the scale of your altitude, right? So we live at 36 degrees north, and I am going to turn the altitude until it gets to 36 degrees north. I'm going to stop. And that's it. With this system, using a broom, a compass, and a tape measure, you can achieve a good, decent starting polar alignment. Personally, I've used this. I've got an amazingly close polar alignment. There's ways that you can use to refine your polar alignment, specifically drift alignment. But it all starts with a good polar alignment. You can do this in the daytime. You can do this in the nighttime if you can't see Polaris. Thanks, dude. Or it's all the time. It's a good way to get started learning the process of polar alignment. Isn't that great? I hope you've enjoyed this video. For Explore Scientific, I'm Kent Martz. Get out there and start doing astronomy. And keep looking up. Here you go, Paul. Hey everybody, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Today I'm going to test one, two, test one, two. Polar line your telescope using. Please welcome to the Explore Scientific Stage, Mr. Ken Mars. Hey friends, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Welcome to the running late episode of our social media broadcast as a warm up for our Amazon live show. We've got a couple of We're minutes probably here. Probably just going to roll right into Amazon and keep this stream going too. Well, okay. Whatever works, works. We'll just sort of start and then restart. So anyway, we're going to be talking about a uh, global, global star party and I'm going to be talking global, 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 global. And I'm going to be yeah. talking about our, uh, essential series, uh, 102 millimeter telescope right here for visual use on our Exos two mount. We'll be talking about uh, red light flashlight, the moon map, the planetosphere. We'll be talking about the CF400 uh, starter telescope. Great little starter telescope, very inexpensive. And let's see, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about back here in the back, the 102 millimeter first light, 100, 102 millimeter, 1000 millimeter focal length on an equatorial mount and eyepieces we're going to talk about some eyepieces and that's probably about it so so all right here we go i'm just going to roll everybody roll into amazon right since, into amazon so we're just going to roll into the amazon broadcast we appreciate it and i'll it. give you a cue i'm going to give you your intro again so everybody just sit tight and you're going to get to see the intro again since we're just going to do effectively one broadcast so hang on i'm going to disappear here we go and then come back Please welcome to the Explore Scientific Stage, Mr. Ken Mars. Hello friends, Kent Mars here for Explore Scientific on Amazon Live Broadcast. Today we're going to be talking about Howdy, Global Star partner. Party, uh, which leads us into 
Uh, we're going to be talking about visual astronomy uh, and ways to do that. We're going to start out with everybody needs eyepieces for your telescope, and we're going to be fo focusing on telescopes today. Right off the bat, I want to tell you about a sale we've got going on. We have... Did we have that sale on Amazon? We have the 7030 on Amazon on sale. I'm going to tell you about the EP, the non-waterproof 70 degree, 30 millimeter eyepiece right here. So the Great one you, example. The, you can't 50, take a bath with that one. You can't take a bath with this one. It's not waterproof. <laughs> uh, it's a 70 degree apparent field of view, 30 millimeter uh, eyepiece for $50. That's effectively, might as well just call it half off or close to it. It's a great deal. Going to be going on for about another week or so. Uh, feel free to go over into the carousel right now and pick yourself up one. We have two versions, the Explorer Scientific branded version that I have right here or uh, the Bresser branded version. They're the exact same eyepiece, exact you same optics, one or the exact, other. exact same price. So you'll be getting one of these eyepieces. A fantastic deal. Uh, close to 50% off. $50 right now. Uh, we had the 25 degree on eyepiece on sale previously. Now we have the 30. And to give you a little hint, we're probably going to have the 35 on sale here in a couple of weeks too. So you can get yourself no a a no deal hints. as well. So it comes in a, uh, a nice keeper sleeve, uh, great uh, eyepiece, uh, inexpensive kit, and gets you the wonderful 70 degree apparent field of view. Uh, as we have said, it is not waterproof like the other, all the other explorers. Let's get a close up of it. Eyepieces. Oh. Close-up's not set up yet, so we're going to have to do the setup for the close-up. One thou. Not on, not on screen yet. No, because I'm over here. Well, you got to switch right there beside you. You can, you can tap one of them white glowing right. buttons. And there we go. Picture in a picture, and there, there we are. The Explore Scientific... 70 degree apparent field of view. Apparent field of view means when you hold the eyepiece up and look through it like this and measure the apparent field of view you have, it's 70 degrees. It's not the true field of view that you get when you put it on a telescope. That's a different story. We'll talk about that another time. But just a fantastic eyepiece. You can't beat the price for a two inch, 30 millimeter eyepiece. 30 millimeter focal length five piece. You can't beat the price on this. You'll never see a price you like this again. Turn it off. Yeah, you, you can probably get a stick and beat it with a stick, but that's the only way you're going to beat this price. Uh, fantastic opportunity, exclusive right here from Explore Scientific uh, here on Amazon Live. Pick it up over in the carousel right now. Uh, we do have a chat function that's available. However, it's not up on my monitor, but I bet it gets up there pretty quick. And uh, hopefully we don't have a sound problem. Uh, we've turned the sound down on it, and there you go. So continuing on the theme of eyepieces, let's move on to the 82-degree 24, the 82-degree 11, and the 82-degree 14. So we'll put these in order, backwards order for me like that most magnification to least magnification like that as well as as well as the eyepiece carry case uh soft-sided carry case a great uh piece of kit to protect your eyepiece investment right there this is these are the uh waterproof eyepieces from explore scientific these are in our most popular sizes or most popular series, the 82 degree series, and among the most popular eyepieces we sell as well. Uh, these are waterproof. They are, and uh, Paul is walking in front of the camera. Yeah, Paul, you got to see a nice shot of Paul's back. You didn't see anything right there? Yeah, so anyway, they're waterproof, meaning they, when they're assembled, they have O-rings in them. When they get put together, 
Uh, they are submerged in a bath of argon. Argon is an inert dry I am gas. Not so that a bath forces it's in a bath argon. Of, it's a bath of argon. I am not taking a bath in argon. I'll take a bath in argon as long as my head's above the argon. I don't care. I don't think that's a good idea. It's a dry gas. It's not going to hurt you any. No. So that's what they said it's about inert. the uh, silver paint on the Tin Man. Well, that was lead paint. So. Yeah. There you go. But yeah. So I wonder just exactly what would happen if you had uh, a body full of argon. Well, it can't soak into your body. It's just going to be a bath of argon. Unlike now, if you had your head below it, I know exactly what would happen. If you have your head submerged under the argon, and you start breathing it, one of two things is going to happen: you're going to come up out of the argon and breathe air, or you will be fully purged of air, and then your uh, lungs will protest mightily, and then you'll die. Do they That's use argon in neon? No. What happens when you electrify argon? No idea. Can't you're supposed to know? Don't know it all. that. Uh, it, know it'll glow everything. something. All gases will glow in some when you electrify them. <sighs> uh, it takes a little bit of mercury to cause the uh, conductivity to go up. So every I'm, I'm every, disappointed. Every fluorescent light bulb has a wee bit of mercury in it that causes the electric current. To I'm glow very disappointed better. in you, Ken. It vaporizes into the gas. Huh? You know, there's a few things I don't know. So very life very goes on. disappointed. So, anyway, uh, moving yeah. on, the Come argon on. eyepieces He's are submerged. Such a bad mood in, today. Are some, I'm just trying to get through the show right now. Apparently, it's a bad. The mood. Uh, argon uh, is submerged in uh, <laughs> the eyepieces are submerged in the argon. Yeah. And that causes all the air to come out. The air takes the moisture with it. And therefore, what happens is they put a plug in under that little AR symbol right there. They, they put a have, plug in there. We have a machine here that does this, right? We have a small tank that does it. It's not a manufacturing can, is, is, scale Can you tank. see through it? They generally, yeah, it's invisible. It's a clear gas. It's inert, clear no, gas. No, the walls of the machine. Yeah, it's like a fish tank. Well, why don't why haven't we gotten together and filmed this? I guess it's just a matter of you saying, "Hey, let's go film this," and we go film it. Uh, yeah, very simple. So the argon gets out, gets in there. The air and moisture come out. The argon plug goes in. The labor gets stuck on it. Now there's no moisture inside this sealed eyepiece. The beauty of that is it makes it waterproof and it won't fog up internally. So eyepieces that aren't waterproof can fog up internally. You have to protect them very well. Uh, you know, dew's not going to cause a problem, but if they get really wet, then there's going to be a problem. Also comes with this uh, uh, nice Velcro-sided carry case. You can That's fit five or six of the 82 degree or uh, lower. You can fit three of the 92 or 100 degree eyepieces in here. You could put a great kit as well. You could also put in one half right the eyepieces and in the other half your lunch could do that i it'd be a small lunch sandwiches a, a banana and maybe a sandwich or an apple would be yeah some not, sandwiches not and a there. bag of co a bag of cookies so anyway moving on paul is <laughs> paul has apparently gone off the rails completely he's out in the field next to the tracks moving farther and farther away from the tracks. i am trying my speak. hardest to get you to start smiling instead of being so surly uh, the more you try the more surly i'm gonna get Paul. now that's not true because you got a smile on your face everyone can see it. so now we're going to talk about <laughs> the cf 400 the uh, telescope right here. Blue carbon ramp. Is you're that too you're high? like almost out of frame. There you go. So I'm going to have to hold it over here. I'm gonna I know. Get, I'm you gonna guys have, to have got to come up with something better. My cheat sheets are better. gone. So, blue, where, where, Explorer 1, blue car, carbon fiber wrapped 
telescope comes on an alt as mount very smooth very simple to use comes with uh kellner 20 and 10 eyepieces if Look i remember here. correctly Watch they're this. inch they're inch and a half eyepieces right there we're gonna see Whoa. some b-roll it's so beautiful what's going on kent i'm watching the video you've got a, does, it, uh, does it not have sound no oh well i figured it had some music playing or something no see Make it comes it with a background. cell phone holder it's a 70 millimeter aperture comes with a <laughs> smartphone adapter uh yeah. has a uh, tray a nice tripod an eyepiece tray it and spins around on the carousel with blue and gold lights behind it. Yeah. Uh, there we go. A quick look at a lot of pieces of the Explore One blue carbon fiber wrapped Altaz telescope right here. That's too high. It won't fit. Uh, there's the tripod. Comes with a red dot finder. So you're going to put the red dot finder on, point the telescope at something a long ways away, adjust the red dot finder to where it is lined up with the uh, object that's in the center of your eyepiece. And now when you go out tonight and want to look at the moon, well, you can't look at the moon tonight yet because uh, it's the, uh, it may be a new moon tonight. Maybe well, a, if you I were look. So, next on night the or other two, side of the planet, you might be able to. Next night or two, you'll be able to see this, the moon after suns right at sunset and a great target for a little scope like this. It uh, has a nice smooth focuser on it. One word of caution, don't look at the sun with this telescope. You'll put your eye out. Uh, we can uh, uh, set you up with a sun catcher. We'll talk about those. No, we didn't put the sun catcher over there, did we? Can you put those over there, Noah? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about sun catchers here in a minute. Over the cell, the uh, carousel. It is inside a, of Amazon Live. What? So the carousel is inside of oh, yes, Amazon the carousel. Live. When I talk about the carousel, we're talking about being on the Amazon Live platform. Yeah. Uh, if you're on other platforms and seeing this, that's what we're talking about. You can go over to Amazon Live and see us over there. And another piece you can of kit research I want to and talk purchase about just immediately if you want. Red light flashlight, always a great uh, thing to have. It comes with a next neck lanyard or a pocket clip. I used this all weekend long. Was at a star party. Uh, oh, about an hour away from here. That was a music festival. We did telescopes, solar astronomy during the day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and did uh, got in some night astronomy Thursday night and Friday night, and then Saturday night cleared off pretty nicely, and we did some fun astronomy. Tyler Bowen stayed up all night Saturday night uh, and went to bed before sunrise, but got to see the planets uh, in a line over in the east, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and Venus, along with the moon up there. So... Uh, uh, he had a great time, but boy, he was hurting for sleep as we had to pack up and leave after about three hours of sleep. The red light flashlight's over in the carousel. I still don't have the um, chat up, so if you're giving me Why a shout out, I appreciate it very is, is much. The screen off. <sighs> Screen's off. Oh. Or not, I, there's, it's blank. So anyway, uh, we have a chat function. I'm sorry if you've been chatting and I haven't been giving you a shout out. I just looked over there and saw that. Uh, if you're new to the stream, you feel free to uh, give us a shout out and tell us howdy. And if you feel so moved, give us a follow and we'll give you a shout out for that as well. We appreciate uh, having conversations with the customers here. Uh, it's a great platform. Also, if you uh, have a question about something and don't want to ask in the chat, that's okay. You can go to the Explore Scientific store on Amazon.com and use the contact seller button and you will then be able to ask us your question about telescope binoculars whatever it is and Noah Menard the Amazon guy he's waving hi from his uh, area he will get you hooked up with a customer service representative and we will get you the answer to your question and uh, it can be about anything astronomy or any product we sell or heck anything for that matter we'll try and come up with an answer for you we even Might have even, a bunch if you of ask for, toys, too. If you ask for a recipe for Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, you know, we'd probably come up with one of those as well. So we have lots of STEM toys as well that we haven't done a lot on. We need to focus a few shows on that, but uh, uh, we shall move on. Anyway, 
This red light flashlight, great to have around your neck. If you're out doing ast astronomy at night and you're in a dark site, want to read something, that red light, which runs off of one AA battery. You want to um, get a close up of it? I don't know. Can you? Take it off your neck, maybe. Put it right in front of your iPad. Uh, you got to turn it sideways. Bring it back. There you go. Focus a little bit farther back than normal. Has a zoom function, so you can make the beam a little bit tighter. And if you want to have fun with it, it'll cycle through and start flashing like that if you need a signaling Ow. device of some sort. You hurt and, my eyeballs. Yep, darn it. Kills me. As I say, it comes with a nice neck lanyard that I put on the uh, belt clip or pocket clip, so I always have it around my neck ready to go. It also can be detached real quick through the standard pinchy clippy thingy. How, do, how Is that the technical name? Yes, it is. Okay. Absolutely. Just wanted to check in. Right now, uh, for a great price. So uh, let's talk about, still no chat function. So let's talk about. Why is it not working now? Because it doesn't want to. It's gone on strike. Is it clearly? Has turned it to ex, uh, to mirror this desktop. That might be better. Oh, it helps if you plug it in. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, minor little problem. The cord, the HDMI, the HDMI cord was not plugged in. So let's talk about the telescope I have here <laughs> on top of the Exos 2 GT. There is it we working go. Working now, Ken. Uh, Marcos Andros Lopez says, this man is a menace to society. I suspect you're talking about not me. But can't hopefully, ever tell. Hopefully so, he's talking about me. I suspect he is talking about I would about love you. that. Paul Newton, menace to society. So here we go. The Exos, excuse me, the uh, Essential, Essential Series. Is that that's how? 102 millimeter aperture. Uh, telescope is a fantastic visual tool. Howdy, partner! It comes with a two-inch star diagonal. It takes either two-inch eyepieces or one and a quarter-inch eyepiece uh, like the anything in our series will fit into it, uh, except for the one that's a three-inch eyepiece. It won't fit. It's very specialized. Mark uh, Deferanzi says, howdy, hello, Mark. Glad you joined us. Thank you for coming back. Uh, appreciate that very much. Um, it comes equipped with a our new hybrid two-in-one finder foot that will accept either, I think I can spin this around for you and show it to you this way. It comes with the hybrid finder foot that will take either the Explore Scientific Mead finder foot which is sort of like an upside down T, or the Cinta Celestron Orion foot that uh, is on the other style of foot. It's like a mini dovetail. So either one of these will fit in here. I can't take this off because it's too close to the dove to the handle, but you can see it right here. And this is our uh, straight through eight power by 50 millimeter. Uh, straight through finder scope, a great tool to help you locate objects in the sky. So it is setting on an Exos 2 GT with PMC8. So I have not balanced this. So I'm going to balance it real quick here live on the air to show you how to do it. Balance is important when you start doing uh, using a go-to mount. You want it close to balance. We have this one. Let's see where it goes. It's a little bit counter heavy, counterweight heavy. I actually want it counterweight heavy just a little bit. That keeps the teeth engaged on the drive system, or in this case, the belt engaged. There we go. It's a little bit heavy on that side. That's what I want. And now this is going to be the tail. I have it uh, nose heavy. I want this to be camera heavy or eyepiece heavy. So I am simply going to loosen the saddle plate. When I do this, I always stand behind it, so if something starts sliding, it'll go into my chest and I can stop it from falling on the ground. I literally never do it sideways, like over here and try and do it, or over there, because I don't want it to fall on the ground and go kaplunk, because then I'll have destroyed my investment in telescopes. That's neutral balance right there. I want it just a little bit heavy on the counterweight side, so I am going to simply make it so 
just like that. That's probably enough right there. So now it's heavy on the counterweight and heavy on the eyepiece side. That ensures that the gears are always meshed and engaged. Now, the Exos 2 GT with PMC8 is a great mount. Uh, it comes, the drive motors are micro yeah. stepper motors, which are controlled by a circuit board. And that circuit board uh, has a torque limit setting. So in, in an old DC drive uh, servo motors, you just apply power and they're at full torque the whole time. You can't you know, regulate that torque. So they just drive and drive and drive. If it runs into something, it just keeps pushing until it starts tearing up the gears that are inside of it. With the micro stepper motors, the circuit board's inside there. We can program the torque limit, and we can actually change that through programming of the silver box, or if you have the other Exos, the iXos 100, you can change the programming uh, of the uh, mechanism through our universal uh, configuration tool. Uh, very cool tool that lets you do all sorts of stuff and programming and setting certain things inside the brain that operates this, the eight processors that operate it. And so it's a belt drive system, eliminating the direct gear drive uh, transfer mechanism. Has a worm gear and a ring gear that make it move in both the right ascension, which is the round and around like the earth spins, and declination, which is sort of like up and down. So how does it run? Well, you can run it hooked up to a computer, uh, and the Exos 2 GT with PMC8 has this silver box. To run it with a computer, you can do it wirelessly, but we strongly recommend that you do it wired. You have to have an FTDI chipset uh, to do that, uh, which is simply a chipset in the uh, cable that allows certain communications protocols to happen. You can't just use any old cable. It has to be the correct cable. So. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It's actually, is it turned on? I'm running it with the uh, power bank flashlight power supply. Uh, I used one uh, all weekend long for the star party. Had charged it up a couple of times. You can run this remotely with an iPad or Android tablet with a screen of at least seven inches or a Windows tablet with a screen of seven inches or a Windows laptop or desktop running an app called or named Explore Stars. And if you look in your, your store, it'll say Explore Stars by Dan Dickerson. He's the guy who created it. Um, and we're working on an app for an Android phone and an iPhone, but it's not ready yet. So here we go. I'm going to, oh, my screen is still red from when I was using it at night at a star party. I set it so that the screen is red right there. I think you can see it. Uh, the screen is a nice red color and the brightness is turned way down. The way you do it is you go to accessibility, display and text size, you scroll down to color filters, and in my case I tap, it shows them on, I simply turn off the color filters and there we go. The color filters are off back to a standard um, coloring scheme that we're all used to. Now I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi and I'm going to see hopefully the system pop up and I'm going to guess this is the one that we had that has a problem in it and they were playing with it. Nope, oh, there it is. Nope. It just came up. PMC 8-00. This is the first article and I'm going to tap on it to connect to it and it is now connected up and so now I can make, make the mount move and here we go. Close that. I'm going to launch Explore Stars, and I'm going to make sure it's not running in the background. And it's not. If it's running in the background, it won't connect many Bluegrass. times. Bluegrass. So Maggie has a message for you, Kent. And there we go. I'm using the virtual joystick, and it moves. What is the virtual message? It says, hi, Kent. Really enjoy your show. Thank you very much. We enjoy I, having I, you here. I watch, like, and share almost every day. We appreciate that because... By the way, this is Egon. Ah, it's Egon Rich. Rich. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Egon. We appreciate it very much. So I'm simply going to go to... I want to go to the sun. We haven't talked about polar alignment. 
got to polar line this thing. You got to point it north and get this axis right here aligned with the north celestial pole or in the southern hemisphere aligned to the southern celestial pole pointed due south. I accomplished that during the daytime using a compass and getting a straight edge. So here we go. We're going to have a good polar alignment. I checked. I could see a Polaris in my scope if it's at night. Uh, I can see the Polaris in the field of view, so I know I'm close. And I'm going to go, let's say, catalog Messier objects. We're going to assume it's at night. We can see all this stuff. And I'm going to go to M1, the Crab Nebula. Just a few taps. And there we go. It doesn't go, of course. It's going to fight me tooth and nail because, you know. Why not? Because it's live TV, right? Yep. I'm going to reset the alignment, reset Welcome comm links. to my world. Yep, and I'm going to now try and tell it to park the telescope. And it didn't park the telescope. So, live hey, TV. Tyler, Annie, if you're watching, bring him the correct silver box instead of the one that was having issues. I think this may be that one that was having issues. Uh, which is you know, the one we just ever, grabbed. Which is, Ken helps out with uh, customer service. So sometimes we get stuff back that we, and of course we send a new one or fix it we, or whatever, uh, but they want to figure out what's wrong with it just in case, you know, want to make, make sure what it is. So, so I'm just going to go, go through, over. hey, this is live TV. Everybody has problems in the field, right? So I'm going to. Mine's usually uh, at my desk. I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to forget the network completely, start over. It's going to pop up again, PMC 8-00. I'm going to have to put in the password. Shh. The password is super secret. It's the name of the system, capital P, capital M, capital C, dash, capital E, I, G, H, T. Hit join, and here we go. I can turn this around so I can see the lights and watch what the lights are doing join incorrect password of course <laughs> of course one more time p m c dash capital e i g h t that's a secret password don't let anybody know what it is it's not secret it's just there for a little bit of security and here's what we're finding out. The, this one has a problem with the SSID is what I'm going to say. So hmm. one more time. Now you can't change it. Okay. I'm going to try this one more time. And then I'm just going to go on down the road. I've asked them to bring you a new one. Yeah, they're probably not watching. They're probably dealing with customers. They usually watch in the background, though. Yep. Just so they can make so fun of us later. I'm going to type really, really slowly. What? P. M. C. I'm having trouble getting dash. Dash. Remember that cartoon? E. Uh, I G H T. He's like goes to the DMV, Join. and the guy that runs there the DMV go. is a sloth. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, <laughs> I do. Okay, so I've rejoined. So now I'm going to make sure Explore Stars is, isn't in the background. Going to run it again, and here we go. Virtual joystick stick says it's connected, so I'm going to. Run it back electronically to the home position. And of course, it's just not working. Hmm. Silver box is spiked me, Tyler. He just walked in. So let's see if this will work. I'm not holding my mouth right. I don't have a mouse. Huh? Huh? Messier Crab Nebula slew to go to. And there it goes. There it goes. Nice and quiet. Ah, the 
deck's not moving at all. The deck moved a while ago. There it goes. It doesn't have very good connection though. Yeah, it could be a cable issue. You have to make sure that you have proper tight connection. Paul. This is exactly what happened. Paul sidetracked me. Uh, That's not I'll true. Paul then. Paul I'm blaming Paul. He Paul, sidetracked Paul, Paul. me. He was, he was Russian. He's, I'm, not I'm not doing. Russian. He he tried, he was I'm Russian. I'm not Russian. He, I'm you, totally English heritage. There you go. So now we're looking at the Crab <laughs> Nebula, except the deck didn't move exactly right. Right, and we're going to do that. Yeah. Come on over here. Get it. So we're going to be on. We're going to hit menu. Get a we're going to hit settings. We're going to hit park. And that's just going to go back to where it was. And because we know that it didn't move initially, it's not going to go back to exactly where it was. No. Because it's smart enough to know. Exactly where it was at. Except that it missed the middle, some micro steps in the middle. Correct. And it didn't go all the way back. Exactly. And in fact, it's, it's going to be off just a little bit. Not a whole lot. But I don't. Instead of unlocking the clutch, can't move it with the joystick. I know it. Why, Tyler? Because you may change. Step onto. The <laughs> Sorry, camera I gotta actually get into the camera because I may break the camera. We don't want to adjust anything or, or misalign the gear mesh. That's what we don't want to do. We know where the high spot is it on comes, the mount. It comes. It comes adjusted. already corrected. So if you are one of those wonderful individuals that slew to something, it's off, and unlock the clutch and move it. You're you're putting yourself in a world of hurt later changing, on down the road. You're changing your ring gear. You're changing worm your rear gear. Mesh. Rear, 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 One of them mesh. meshes thingy my right. bobs. So what happens Which, is if you run it, let me just do this real quick. I'm gonna do it in right ascension. So if we run it, and we'll just say bam, bam, bam. get away with it. And people ask us, I want to turn off that sound that music makes. I don't like it. It's not making music. That's the sound. All, all mounts make a noise. And this is actually a very quiet mount compared to a lot. Even encoded mounts make right. noise. So, it, it's just something that you have to deal with. No mount is quiet if, unless you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars. That's correct. So let's say I get done viewing tonight. And don't Tyler, do don't do it. If I unlock this. Don't do this, it. It makes me cringe. Well, don't I can do, do it. it. Uh, it makes me cringe. For demonstrations. If I do this ah. and turn it back, what have I done? You've adjusted the gear mesh. I have loosened. You've the ring the, gear, yeah, and now the tight spot is not at the tight spot yeah. is not at the top, not anymore. Where, where the worm gear is, it's where you last it's now left. It's now forty-five it. degrees over, so I'm gonna put it about back where it was. So if I do that and park it here, and then tomorrow I view the same object, yeah, and stop at the same spot, I've now rotated my ring gear worm gear mesh, yeah, ninety degrees. Correct. And if I do it tomorrow night, it's one hundred eighty. 180 degrees so now the round ring gear that has a tight side and a loose side that loose side is now ro rotated to the top and the mount's going to have flop black gear mesh loose mesh back and forth back and forth wobble 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 and you're going to think you need to work adjust the worm gear and so you're going to figure out how to do it and you're going to push the worm gear up yeah if you keep doing the same thing in four more nights you've now bound it up because now it's turned all the way around Agreed. Where the tight mesh was, and now it's so tight, it's super tight, and it won't work. Correct. So I'm going to put this back. No, nope, no, nope, leave it alone. <laughs> he was about to do it again. James Dugan says, I think the mount sounds sound cool. Sounds cool. Quintinus sounds Jen sound cool. Quintinus Jenkins says, I have seen worse. I have seen mounts that I equate to spice grinders or coffee grinders. There are a couple that do sound like spice yeah. grinders so, and coffee grinders. I've now got it worked back around to just about dead perfect. So just like that, we can now go to somewhere else. Let's go to Andromeda's uh, Galaxy. Andromeda Galaxy should be up. Oh, That's not where very, I wanted to go. Very poor. Menu, catalog, Messier. Your crushing accent is not good. M31. Mm. Right there. <laughs> and Slew. That should be towards the, almost to the zenith. Mm -hmm. Should be. I mean, I like the sound. The sound tells me that the mount's working. But it's not so loud. But it's not so loud that it's going to go crazy. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a coffee grinder. Which there are, again, there are some mounts that sound exactly like a coffee grinder. Coffee grinder. And it's, it's pretty bad. Bluegrass McGee says, all my mounts are like this. <laughs> what? Which We're, part? 
Where, did you, where did you see that at? It's right there on the the M, on the, the, the thing. Oh, down there. I yeah. missed that. Yeah. Do we have that running again? So there we go. If we have a great polar alignment and we start it out from a perfectly horizontal, perfectly pointing at Polaris of the telescope, yeah. we've now gone to Andromeda Galaxy. There's reasons why it can be off. Uh, that's why it's always good to have your finder scope well well aligned with your telescope. Yep. So you can look through there and go, oh, I'm off just a little bit, and then use the hand controller to go left, right, up, and down. People say, well, I need a button. I can't do it. And here's how I do it. Well, there is your I button. will. There's buttons There's there. buttons here, but you can't. I'm right eye, left eye dominant. So yep. here's how I do this. I will look through the telescope with my right left eye. Yep. And I hold the mount. I set the speed. I'm going to set it at speed six. Yeah. I hold it down make, here. You don't want to make huge adjustments. I hold it down here and look. And I close my right eye and look through the telescope. Mm-hmm. And then, or actually, I do it the other way around. Six eight, I think you do it the other I way. I do right eye, and I can see through the telescope. I close my right eye. I can look down, see where my fingers are on the left, right, up, and down. And I just open my eyes. So I'm looking in the eyepiece with my right eye, with, and I close my left eye. When I want to see my tablet, I simply close my right eye, open my left eye. I can see my tablet with my dominant eye, and I just go back and forth. Now, are you doing that to position, preserve, preserve your night vision no, in, I'm your, doing in that. your certain eye? Nope, I'm doing that so I can... Keep my thumb on the controller and see where the thumb well, is. I'm talking about closing one, keeping one open. Yeah. No, it's simply now. If I was right eye dominant, I would look in my left eye. Yep, and put the pad to the right side and put it on the right side, and Which, then that's what I do. Look through my right eye, my non-dominant eye, and then I simply open my eyes, see where my thumb is on the left, right, up, and down yep. buttons, position it, close my left eye, looking back through, and voila. I can look through the telescope and use the hand controller yep. and not have to have that tactile feel of a paddle. button or a paddle that tells me where it is. So, exactly. Uh, great go-to system. Um, it's an easy go-to system. So, Tyler, talk a little bit about how uh, you would go about connecting this up with a computer. With right? a computer? Well, you need a certain cable, and I think that cable is over it's there. It's an FTDI chipset. Um, I, I don't know if we have that on Amazon or not. Do we, Noah? The FTDI chipset cable, you know? Okay. Well, that's fine. Well, it, it does exist on Amazon because I bought one on Amazon. Yeah, you can buy one. We need to get the we need to get the ASN. You, you can buy one on Amazon. Check out FTDI your new chipset. comment. Check out our new comment. My Alt S Evolution mount sounds like a grinder. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes that happens. This one does not. That's from James Dugan. James Dugan, who lives down under. So. You need a FTDI chipset cable, which is an RJ232 type cable, to go into the PMC8 or the silver box, and obviously a USB. What the USB does, slash FTDI chipset, is it enables COM port. That way you can control the mount through ASCOM or POTH or the device hub or the ASI Air Plus. Um, but with the ASI Air Plus, you have to invert this signal that's in technical. here. But I'm getting technical. Real technical. But, but to just plug it into I a do computer. The same thing. I do the same thing. Well, some people Step like it, some people bit. don't. So you literally just plug it into the PMC8 box, make sure that you have a nice secure connection, like Kent did not have when he was having the deck. That's why yep. the deck never moved. Sorry, Kent had to do it. No, that's <laughs> fine. I do. Where are the letters with that F T D I chipset cable. It's usually RJ232 to USB, usually. Yeah. So they're like twenty nine dollars. Like not twenty, bad. yeah, they're not bad. And then you plug this into the computer that you're wanting to use, or a Nook computer, depending on what you want to remote into. And you would set, you would download your planetarium software. Uh, cars to seal. Cars to seal. Lots of free programs out uh, there. There's a lot. Of Nina. You gotta be careful. Don't uh, turn off too much. But then, then you got Poth or Ascom. So you got to make sure you download Ascom. What's Ascom? The, what's is, the one that's most reliable in your opinion as a say. personal user? It, all programs are faulty in their one way or another. Uh, I, you know, all of them have pros and cons. I would be here for hours. And and we gotta be careful <laughs> not to send people off of. The platform. I know, but uh, I like CDC. Cards to seal. Cards to seal is the most user friendly. I think there that's you go. correct. Uh, it's as a really beginner, user friendly. It's, it's free, a, it's, and, and it also depends on what you're wanting to do. Do you are you a tablet user? Are you a computer user? 
That, that but, also has a, but, a, a but hindrance. Going to the computer. But you literally plug this into the FTDI into the PMC8, make sure you have a secure connection, this into the computer, then you hear, should hear the computer go the do -do -do, the and normal. It, it finds it. It finds it, then you assign the ASCOM. What's ASCOM? ASCOM is. Astronomical Communications. It's a protocol that's yeah. a guy developed. It's across if, platform. If you do any kind of telescope stuff with mounts, ASCOM, you are familiar with. If again, free. Again, it is very free because you have to download it depending on which mount you use. Very free. It's very free. I mean, you can donate if you want. They oh, take that's donations. true. You can take you yeah. donate. They, yeah, they do okay. donations. Yeah. Um, and same with the planetary software. There are some planetary so, softwares that are expensive and are free. Right? At any time. Just want you to know. There it is. At there any is. time. You can donate to me. Eleven ninety nine for an. You sure that's the FTDI chipset cable? Yeah. Awesome. How that's, long is the cable? To say. Looks pretty six long. and a half uh, millimeters. Six feet. six feet. Six feet. That's pretty so, nice. So we recommend if you're going to do astrophotography, ten feet or more. <laughs> well, a ten foot cable is good. A six foot will work, but a ten longer. But we want you and recommend you to use a wired system computer to the machine because that's a robust stable system that can't be interfered with if you have a neighbor and you're out there do, trying to do it wirelessly which you can do yeah, and all of a sudden <laughs> huh yeah bluegrass mcgee my old lx 200 mount can wake you up from them <laughs> yeah from a mile away this mount <laughs> is super smooth and quiet we appreciate that endorsement but if you have a uh, a wireless connection and you're going along fine and you're in your house all cold or warm depending on the season if it's freezing outside you're warm you're sitting there and you're thinking everything's going fine and unbeknownst to you your neighbor fired up his shortwave radio and, and fried your connection or your wife turned on the microwave oven no, and just, fried the connection it's just connection doesn't mean your mouth's fried it's just someone's using the same wi-fi channel causing an interference right. which it drops communication we need to make sure we say drops when, when it's visual okay you can deal with it but, but three, three hours later you find out that you're because you you'll run your system all night long yeah i run right? it wired i don't do wired. i mean if because, i'm out doing star parties wireless right but if i'm at home or um, anything else it is it is hooked up to a computer no right. computer that way i can control it and have a reliable so, connection so you sit there and go but but i don't want to have to be out there with the computer all night long that's easy i don't have to use, I'm out in the shed. well but you're in the shed but you can run it from in your house yeah. using zoom or well you can use you know, um, any different programs that let you do a remote remote control, remote control. Right. so you got your computer setting out with a computer whether it's uh, with a telescope yep whether it's a little nook computer or a I have a friend that's got a big old honking, like 10 terabyte hard drive system with, I don't know, six or 12 gigs of RAM. I mean, he really that. has a machine yeah. under, right on his computer. And then he sits in his house and controls it, remote, uses Zoom I'm or same way. whatever, remote, controls it remotely yep. from inside. So the heavy lifting's happening out here. Yep. But the control's happening in there. So you really see, simple and, and that's, straightforward. And that's the thing that you also have to make aware of is cable management. Mm, talk about cable management. A so bit. if if you have cables literally just thrown all over this thing, eventually something's going to get caught. <laughs> something's going to rip. Gonna throw. Something's going to yeah. rip. Your balance is going to be off. Your guiding is going to be horrible. But, but what's what's cool about our system is if a cable does get hung on something, nothing happens. It's it's going to sound terrible. It's going to sound like a coffee grinder because the it's going to chatter. It's the magnets that are releasing and angry engaging. Because it remember, chatter like a cat. Early on, I told you the, these micro stepper motors have a circuit you can set the torque on, and when that torque's limited, re, limit is reached, the motor just simply lets go and tries again, lets go and tries again. It Eventually, sounds bad. where it will give up, it will just stop. I don't think so, it'll continue. But the point of it is, won't tear anything up. No, sound sound pretty bad. It sounds pretty bad. It's like, but oh boy, the sound is deceiving, right? Yeah. So I think of right. it as a warning. It's like something's wrong. I need to fix it. That's what it is. Yeah. Now you're gonna start, stop, go back all over, reset your motor counts, uh, electronically, electronically park it back at the home position, which means use the tablet to move it left, right, up and down. Yep. Come on. Come on, come on, hit the button. The Deep Space says that he's really enjoying the show. Good. At the exact moment that we think you're falling asleep because of the show. What? 
No, Tommy's falling asleep because he stayed up all night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Yes. Mostly like I did. I got in bed about 3 o'clock oh. Saturday night because we were at a public star and I party. I stayed up later. You stayed up until like 6. I was up yeah. at 6 because the planets were up. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I know. That's sorry, Paul. It bores you because it's not entertaining for you. Yeah, it's not entertaining, but... You know, uh, it is entertaining had, for us. We had we, we couldn't really count, but oh, there are at least over a thousand. a thousand people came up, and many people came back three, four, five times. Oh, That's gosh, why yeah. it's impossible to count. Yeah, but we had crowds, you know, left and right, up and down, all night long. I think for the next star party, I'm going to bring a little pitch counter. See, but I don't know. Whoops, I don't know how you're going to give them a number. Give them a number. <laughs> Because give them a ticket. Yeah, give them a ticket because give them a ticket. those it's dark. Yeah, and they're gonna like, come. Do you have a ticket? And they might come to my telescope and not go to yours, and then they go to yours. No, they go they to come, they go to one table, and, and then they come back to mine, and you know it just becomes yeah uh, so, chaos. So Tyler took a time lapse. Tyler took a time lapse. Oh yeah, do, you, do we have that? One. I don't know. If, I don't know if uh, Paul's had a chance. The problem to... is, is that he just gave me his drive and said this is. This yeah, is what I, I want you to do. But there's do like 40 files in there's here. There's only one movie. There's only one. No, there's a, it's not a movie. It's it's stills that Paul's yeah. got to render Where, and put together. Where's the movie that Annie came up with? Annie's still messing with it. But these, okay, so are they TV. JPEGs? Yeah, they're raw. Go down towards the bottom. Uh, what? He's not going to. He, he doesn't have time. Can we yeah. get Annie's JPEG movie? Yeah, I'm going to get it here. I am. Well, go get it and bring it back in here. Grab mm. that thumb drive. Come back in here. 422, so, 430. So anyway, we did time lapse. Man, Tyler that's set his camera are they all up the and same? had it take 15 seconds. What are they? Three second exposures every 15 seconds? What was it? Uh, yeah, 3200. Yeah, 3200 ISO. I'm uh, wide angle shot. Uh, so you got milky or the sky rotation and lasers and kids with. Kids with uh, uh, lights in their shoes walking Howitzers. around and red light flashlights and cars driving by because it's a public star party and people don't know and they just drive along with the headlights on. But we had a grand time and we'll get that movie for you here in a minute. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to leave everything set up here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power supply, which is the on off switch for the system. It's now turned off. I'm going to put this here. I am going to talk about, we're talking about sun catchers. Let's talk about sun catchers real quick. If you have a telescope and want to look at the sun safely, easy to do if you know what you're doing. And how do you know what you're doing? Well, straight up, you go over to the carousel and you order yourself a mm. sun catcher right here. And these are built right here in Springdale, Arkansas. And shipped to you by uh, Mr. These, Nick. By Mr. Nick, back in the back. Uh, he's our box guy. He makes custom boxes and all sorts of other things for us. He has a uh, boxer's fracture at the moment. Yes, he does, but not because he was making boxes. It was more like boxing. So, yeah. uh, comes with solar safe film. You can uh, get a boxer's that, fracture and not actually be hitting anyone. That's true. So, this is one that goes, uh, fits four to seven inches is what it says. These are custom. They come with hard foam and you custom cut the foam to fit your telescope. Now, a word of caution, you want the foam to be tied on your telescope around your dew shield or just your telescope. If it has like a cement cast grain that doesn't have any, any dew shield on it, you want this to be solid on your telescope because you don't want the wind or somebody to walk by and brush past and knock it off. You want this thing to be on there until you decide to pull it off. So uh, we have custom sizes. You can order like five different sizes uh, from our from uh, the Amazon store. Or if you're not sure which one to order or need a custom size, we can do that. You'll simply need to use the uh, contact seller button from our Explore Scientific store on Amazon.com and contact us. Find a, we'll ask you some questions basically. What's the measurement in diameter of your dew shield or optic? And then we can custom make one for you. And that'll be a uh, cool thing for your telescope. With this, this is a white light filter. You can go out and look at the surface of the sun and watch sunspots. It does not show uh, coronal flares or, or uh, coronal mass ejections, flares, loops, and or stuff kernels. like that. 
you're looking at the white light surface of the sun. And uh, it's really cool. You can also hold these up like this and it simply look at the sun. Either. And I tell people, when you first, every time you use one of these, you want to hold it up and look at an angle to see if there's any cracks, splits, or pinholes in here. And if there are, then you want to stop using this, right? And contact us, and we can arrange to send you a new piece of film that will uh, replace the piece that's in here. It comes out really easy, and it's easy to replace. Uh, pretty darn affordable way to look at the sun safely. There's lots of sunspots going on right now. The cool thing is, is there's an eclipse coming up across the United States, coming up out of Mexico and running northeast uh, in April of 2024. And if you're wanting to take pictures and stuff, now is the time to start figuring out what you're doing. And so when the eclipse actually happens, you're running on muscle memory. I learned that the hard way when I went to the 2017 eclipse because I would practiced a little bit but hadn't really tested enough and had to think too much and couldn't enjoy all of the eclipse that I wanted to. But I managed to take some pictures and enjoy the eclipse. I want the next time to be automatic so I don't have to think There is so someone out there much. looking for you, Kent. Who's looking for me? I, I, all he told me is he's wearing a really dark suit with really dark glasses and a black tie and black shoes. Does he have a gun? He doesn't have a gun. can't tell. Well, they're just Every time to... we look at him, we can't actually see him. We have to kind of look away a little bit before we can see him. So he's from the Matrix. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening There is now. somebody out there waiting on you, but he's not in a suit, I guess. I know. Where huh? that came from. Okay, so anyway. Speak up. I said about 2, 2.15. Or 3.15. 3. I'm in a different time zone right now. Heath, the guy that came in and told me somebody was waiting for him, asked him what time we were done. He said 2.15, which was <laughs> 30 minutes ago. So, I'm busy. Uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> Paul is living in the past, apparently, right now. Yes. So, sun catchers are a great way to observe the sun. Now, these go on the front of the telescope, right? You can't use solar safe filters and come to the eyepiece end of the telescope and use it like this to look down in it because it's so focused sunlight, it's simply going to instantly burn a hole through this. If you're looking at it, it's then instantly going to poke you in the eye from a distance and hurt it your don't eye. Do that. We don't want you to do that. So don't use this to look at a magnified view of the sun through the eyepiece. It goes on the front. It's the first thing the sun hits, not the last thing the sun hits. Uh, just like solar eclipse glasses, the glasses you put on your face, you can't use those and then look at a telescope. It'll be like a, 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 a metal burning massive laser going into your eyeball and it will permanently etch your eyeball. It won't be a pleasant thing. So, um, and the message. looks like JR is with us. So if you're just joining us, uh, give us a shout out and tell us you're there. We got a few more minutes. And if you're so Daniel moved, Daniel Sanchez click. has a question. Hello, Ken question. What do I need to do astrophotography of the sun? with the Explore Scientific N208CF. Thanks. You need a solar filter, a sun uh -huh. catcher just like this. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is on the uh, website here on Amazon Live. Uh, please go to Amazon.com and the Explore Scientific store and reach out to us that way and tell us exactly uh, yeah, what you're we'll asking. have to look up. And that way we can look it up and tell you this is the one you need and yeah. then you can get it ordered that way. We need to make sure that the diameter uh, we is know, exactly we know, right. He's got, an N, a, he's got an N208CF, so right. we know what the diameter is. I just want to make sure, we just want to get offline right. and, and We want to make sure we is. go to the material to make sure that it's right rather than at the top of our head because we've right. got so many different telescopes of different sizes it could very easily become transposed. So it's an N208CF, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be the 1112 one. But again, that's Double a guess. Check. 
Yeah. And I could easily be wrong. Uh, but that's I'm pretty what we're sure saying. that's what it is. And you're going to get one. The film is only 12 inches wide. And you've got to have overlap on here to make this thing work, right? And so the size of the hole is irrelevant to most telescopes because you're looking at the sun and you're cutting the light down as much as you can. And in yeah. fact, you're increasing the focal ratio of your sun uh, effectively. Uh, it's not going to increase the focal length, but it increases the focal ratio, which is going to actually give you more depth of field and a little bit sharper picture. Won't be much, but yeah. it'll help it a little bit. You but, want to close down that you know, iris, which is in effect. That's exactly well, what not, you're doing. It's not exactly because an iris would be behind. But it's the but same thing. It's It has somewhat similar to the same effect, so it actually can help you see bright objects clearer by using a smaller uh, uh, pseudo aperture. So, you know, this is going to work well on an N208CF, which is a uh, telescope we used to make. We are sold out of them or very, very close to it. I think we have like one or two left. JR uh, said he's not coming for you today. Well, that's good. Although, come on up, JR, and I'll take you to lunch at the Cracker Barrel across the parking lot here in Springdale, Arkansas. He we have was a built, saying. We have a company restaurant effectively right across the parking lot. and uh, He was just saying, like Mike Nunn says, the men in black are coming for you. Ah, uh, yes, they're in the Matrix. Or it's the men in black. Men one in or black. The other. Can't say which one it is. It's not that the Matrix. That description was also, I can't think of what, remember the guy's name in the matrix that replicates and just keeps coming back. Oh, um, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, that's right. Mr. Mr. Anderson. Smith. So, anyway, solar filters, great way to observe the sun safely. Uh, again, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Broke it. Because you can break your telescope, you can break your solar catcher, or sun catcher, but you can't break your and replace all those things but you can't replace your Mark 1R or Mark 1L eyeball. Those are the only two you get and <laughs> can't be replaced. So we don't want you to do, to put your eye out from Unless a long distance sun poke. Go ahead. Sun poke? Yeah, it's like being poked by a stick except or a finger, except this is a sun poke. A sun poke. And we have here, last item we're going to talk about today is the... 10th anniversary moon map from Explore Scientific, 10th anniversary of Explore Scientific. Uh, this was created for our 10th anniversary in 2018. Yeah. Hard to believe it's been four years since then. Uh, that was before you were working here. Just barely, yes. I started that fall. And so, and so here it is, it has 24, I think we're gonna get a zoom in on this has 24 locations and prominent features on the sun that are visible naked eye or with a small pair of binoculars or a telescope for that matter. Uh, I'm still watching here. Uh, I'm listening on two platforms while there is wonder if it is my internet connection. There are, you know, depending on which platforms you're watching on, uh, there are latencies that are built in and that's always a problem. Watch out for the cats. Um, yeah, and watch out for the cats. So. Uh, Explore Scientific moon map, 12 locations uh, that are very prominent, very easy to see, and great with binoculars as well. On the back is the location of the six Apollo moon landing sites. It would have been cool if they would have put Apollo, where Apollo 13 was going to land, but didn't. And uh, uh, I actually, it also has some locations where the Russian Luna landers landed on the moon as well as one chinese rover i actually knew uh the commander of apollo what would have been apollo 18 18 or 19 camera 18 um bill pogue he actually lived in northwest arkansas after he retired and uh was a speaker at my uh, uh, sugar creek astronomical society uh club meetings a number of times an absolute great guy uh wonderful stories he had the space duration record uh, of, I think it was 84 days up until the International Space Station uh, uh, came because he was uh, on the first crew of um, the Skylab program and he was part of the, um, I believe the um, 
mutiny, as it got called, where they were being worked to death. And they said, we're just taking the day off and going to enjoy being out here in space. And, uh, you know, not much you can do about it when everybody else is on Earth. And you're the only three people there. And uh, life goes on. So, anyway, that's the show for today. Apparently, Mr. Smith or uh, J or K or M or somebody is out there in a suit and tie. I don't think they're in a suit and tie waiting for me. If so we're they are, to sign off today. That was a great guess by me. I appreciate your sharing your time with us. We truly appreciate it. And let me remind you, the 70 degree, 30 millimeter eyepiece, which is not a waterproof eyepiece. It's the only series of Explore Scientific eyepieces that are not waterproof, are on sale for $50. That's effectively half off. Uh, goes through next Friday, I believe. Uh, so, or this Friday. I'm curious. Which, and, JR, uh, which stream is faster? Amazon or one of the others? Got to be careful here. I said one of the others. Yes. The, he said Amazon. Yeah. The, the Amazon bots won't get us for that, probably. No. They don't like us to leave, get off the platform and talk about nice. stuff and leaving the platform. Understandably, it's their platform. They can set the rules, right? Yeah. And then we have to abide by them. So. Uh, okay, so we'll not say which platform it was. Mike uh, Nunn says, great educational show. We try hard. We appreciate that very much. We try to be educational. Yes, on Amazon Live, we are selling stuff directly because Amazon.com. But we also want to make an educational talk about yeah. aspects and help people through things and, and love having the internet interaction. And when people ask us questions, uh, it gives us the ability to answer. You know, if one person asks it, there is other people out there who are thinking it. And it gives us the ability to really pass on some knowledge. So uh, we appreciate people spending their time with us. Thank you very much. And we'll be back tomorrow with First Light Chronicles and Thursday on The Wing, followed up by closing the weekend out with Tyler on Focus. I on Astrophotography. am not here Friday. Ooh, so we get to run without Paul. That will be chaos. Maybe. Or perfectly smooth. Or may other. not run on Amazon at all. Uh, we'll figure it out. So I don't know. We, we've got to got train somebody, and no one's coming in to train. We've got a few days to train, and we'll do it. So, for Paul Newton, the <sighs> voice behind the mask, uh, behind the purple curtain. And the discombobulated and, voice. Am, am, discombobulated voice this morning, the first 30, 20 minutes, effect, especially. And whatever Amazon Menard over in the Amazon Brain Control Center. Amazonard. On behalf of everybody else here at Explore Scientific, I thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate you very much. Goodbye.